Hey guys! So Miss World CEO Julia Morley, current Miss World Vanessa Ponce de Leon, and Miss World 2016 Stephanie Del Valle were interviewed at Novotel Hotel in Manila on August 14 by reporters from three pageant websites, Missology, Sash Factor, and the Philippine Pageantry. The interview lasted about 13 minutes, and in today's vlog, I will react mainly on selected questions that were asked to Julia Morley. And let's start now. They said it's a cooking show, meaning that um, meaning that there is a, there are issues. I mean, you have already chosen business before the contest. Is it a cooking show? Of course it is. I've been following Miss World as long as I've followed Miss Universe for 30 years, and I still can't see any evidence of Miss World as being a transparent pageant. Transparent in the sense that the scores of the contestants are never revealed to the public. We don't always know what type of winner the judges are looking for. We don't know the exact criteria for judging. And the most troubling of all is that almost every year, the judging panel consists of some of Julia Morley's favorite people and officials working for the Miss World organization with Julia herself as the chairman of the jury. So yes, I agree with the assertion that the winner has already been determined by Julia. She picks the winner. She is the cook and the judges are nothing more than her kitchen helpers. I realize this is about the purpose. It's not about the most beautiful women. It's not about the most talented. It's not about that. It's not a contest. This is a search for the face of Miss World that would work best for the partners. Well, I sort of disagree with Tristan of the Philippine pageantry when he said that Miss World is not a contest. If it's not a contest, then why impose certain requirements on the participants and entice them with a generous prize package? And I also disagree when he said that it's not about the most beautiful woman. Well, it's certainly not about the ugliest woman. Though I do agree with him when he said that it is a search for the face of Miss World that would work best for the purpose. But for the purpose to be realized successfully worldwide, you need a woman whose face has a universal appeal who will stop traffic in the streets, and who will look amazing on television and on print, and who will draw huge donors to her charitable causes. Would you settle for someone who is just pretty, or would you settle for someone who is dropped at gorgeous? People talk about it and we do not get it straight from you guys, and we do not really understand what is the, the real purpose of this world. We will always misunderstood, there will always be miscommunication. You know, we really appreciate you saying that because I do understand that people have a preconceived and sometimes yes. um, they see something and they're not able to hear the whole story. Yes, exactly. And sometimes we're not the best at telling the whole yes. story because of the time factor. Yeah. Yes, Julia, you're not the best at telling the whole story, not because of time factor, but because your story changes every year. Duh. You see, I love bathing suits. I think swimsuits and bikinis are wonderful, but I think on the beach they're the best. I sort of understand where she's coming from, that there's a proper place for everything. And not all women do feel comfortable strutting their stuff in a bikini in front of thousands of people. As the owner of the pageant, Julia has every right to change the rules, and that includes eliminating the swimsuit competition if it does not really serve any good purpose. The truth is, I have never seen a Miss World title holder posing for a beauty, fashion, or men's magazine wearing a bikini. So who needs it, right? So, because we're working around the world, every country has their own principles yes. of what is best. Both for boys and girls, actually. It's not just girls, but the fact is that if you put a young woman in a position where she's not used to portraying herself with just minimum clothing and she's got to walk on stage in front of strangers and she's got usually high heels on which I think is ugly with a bikini to wear high heels and strut her stuff as they call it on the stage. That's not making them comfortable. Did you know that in 1951, Eric Morley, Julia's husband, organized a bikini contest as part of the Festival of Britain celebrations that he called the Festival Bikini Contest? The event was popular with the press and was dubbed Miss World by the media. The swimsuit competition was intended as a promotion for the bikini, 
which had only recently been introduced onto the market and which was still widely regarded as immodest. So when the first Miss World winner, Kiki Hawkinson of Sweden, was crowned in a bikini, it caused a big controversy. Countries with religious traditions threatened not to send delegates to future events, and the bikini was even condemned by the Pope. I wonder if Eric, who passed away in 2000, would approve of his wife eliminating the swimsuit segment. I doubt it. Eric would have never wanted to bend the rules just to accommodate those countries that condemn the bikini. Oh no. Mm -mm. Her pocket. We are looking for the, the person the who has, yes, and to make them look, feel terrible looking up, thinking, oh my god, I'm not used to this. I'm a doctor or <laughs> I'm, a, I'm doing something. I'm a future I'm a lawyer. lawyer. I'm, yes, I'm, I just don't feel comfortable doing this. You're not making them feel comfortable. You're making them feel less beautiful. Now you know why the slogan of Miss Universe is confidently beautiful. Because a woman can never be fully beautiful if she lacks the confidence to strut her stuff in a bikini in front of people. So from what I gather from the jeweler's remark is that a Miss World contestant does not need to strut her stuff to feel confident. That may be true. However, by not requiring the contestants to compete in swimsuit, it actually prevents them from attaining their maximum fitness potential and people will always be curious of what a contestant's body really looks like underneath all those layers of clothing. But my job, my wish, is to make women feel fantastic. I, want, I, think, I do passionately believe men want to see the women looking beautiful in gowns and glamorous. You know, the old style is wonderful. You know, the style of dancing with Fred Astaire and so on, and those lovely old dresses, and looking beautiful, like me. That's how you, you get to feel so we changed our Idea. So Julia's idea of making the contestants feel fantastic is to make them look like glamorous stars from the 1930s and 1940s. Padded shoulders, anyone? The families wanted their children to come because they felt more comfortable. Um, because a lot of religions, for example, they don't want their women to be, and you have to respect everybody. Yeah. So that's why we do I am all for respecting everybody, Julia, but that doesn't mean that I agree with certain customs, practices, or traditions of some of these countries. Do I respect a woman's right to cover her head because of a religious belief? Yes. But do I respect the cruel custom of female genital mutilation in certain cultures? Um, nope. And neither would Eric Morley if he were still alive today. He would want every country to respect and abide by his rules and not the other way around. Julia, on the other hand, prefers to appease everyone because it is purely a business strategy. The more countries participate in this world, the more franchise fees for our coffers. We were lucky enough to be able to buy a computer school for the school. And I was so respectful of her and she's beautiful and I'm glad she won. <coughs> Um, a wonderful title, and she deserves it. She's wonderful. I'm hoping we'll meet her here. But it won't stop us all being friends. Yes. And that's the luck of the draw. She could have won Miss World, but she's still a Miss World to me. Yes. So, you know, once people realize that we are different to this universe, there's nothing wrong with this universe. But I believe we've got something that will be a lasting thing. That's why Steph's here still. That's why we've got the best women in the world, because across the world, they will join in. When we go somewhere, they're still out of this world. So even though Catriona Gray did not win Miss World 2016, despite being the favorite of practically every pageant website, Julia thinks that Catriona is still a Miss World to her. Is Julia saying that just to appease Catriona's fans, or does she really mean it sincerely? And by saying that, there is nothing wrong with Miss Universe. She's implying that Miss Universe is a good pageant, but its purpose is not as good, consistent, or popular as that of Miss Worlds. Though I do like the fact that the current and past Miss World title holders are traveling and working together with Julia to promote anything related to the pageant, something that Miss Universe does not customarily do. And then one thing that people should learn about this is that 
Miss World is an institution, but at the same time, it's not a pageant or a contest anymore. It is an, a movement with 100, more than 100 members who's like spreading that message and movement across the world. I mentioned earlier that Miss World started out as a bikini contest and then evolved into a popular traditional beauty pageant. But in the 1980s, the pageant repositioned itself with the slogan, Beauty with a Purpose, with added tests of intelligence and personality. In other words, the pageant patterned itself after Miss America, but with more facially beautiful women. But after Eric Morley's death in 2000, Julia made changes to make the pageant more inviting to the public by engaging them to vote via phone or online and by being politically correct and inclusive. It is a movement in the sense that it does raise public awareness about existing social and economic problems that affect mostly disabled and underprivileged children. This is perhaps the biggest reason Miss World has attracted so many participating countries, because they know that if their respective governments fail to help the children, here comes Miss World to the rescue. And we cry, and that's nothing wrong really with crying. crying. A man has a right to cry. And, but this is when you see the best side of men. Give them a chance to be this way. You know, we often see men and expect them to be tough and this, but there they had the heart, and the heart was really right there. And I think we're so fortunate to have all the world together.